الحسن المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وأرواح العالمين لترى بمختمه الفداء ما بعد السلام عليكم دي بذل سسس ورحمة الله وبركاته Continue our topic on how to strengthen a person's relation with that of the Imam Ajar Allah Ta'ala Farajah al-Sharif in Al-Ghayb al-Kubra Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa muhammadin wa alayhi wa muhammadin and one of the important factors that a person has to know and pay attention to is the reasons for which our Imam السلام, went into Ghaybah so that we can strive and work in order to prepare ourselves considering that which is necessary for him to reappear. To start off with, we have a question concerning the four deputies of our 12th Imam, Ajallah Ta'ala Farajah al Sharif. If you can start the question, please. So the first question is, what was the name of the first of the four special ambassadors or deputies of the 12th Imam during the minor occultation? Uthman bin Sa'id al-Amri, Hussein bin Ruh al-Nawbakhti, Ali bin Muhammad al-Samari, Muhammad bin Uthman al-Amri. First one. Are you sure? All of you. The first one. Ahsantum. It's the first one. Ahsantum. Salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salla. Ahmad wa ala Muhammad. Ahsantum. Tayyum. As we're talking about the insufficiency in the supporters of a 12th Imam Sharif, this is one of the things that leads and that has led for the Zuhur to be delayed. One of the matters that I wanted to talk about with a little bit more detail is the matter of um, is the matter of not having the necessary level of awareness, not having the necessary level of knowledge related to how. Imam alayhi salam's zuhur is supposed to be brought about. One of the things to be noticed is that I ask now as a question for you to just think about. For there, for the zuhur to come, to become closer, the imam is in need of Shias who have a certain skill set. Correct? It is not only related to the musalla or the mihrab or the member. It is also related to knowledge, what you can do. I ask now, most of our community, our youth, what are our specializations? Either related to medicine, related to money, economics, banking, accounts, especially accounts. We have some brothers, for example, doing business. But again, after that, there is a huge deficiency with regards to humanities. Any society, any civilization is measured according to the ilm or any language. The, the value of any language is discerned by the amount of knowledge that is in that language. Okay? And that knowledge is not only restricted to these sciences. Among the sciences that are necessary is a matter of literature, no matter what the tachasus or the specialization of sociology, political sciences, journalism and media, etc., etc., however much comes and is spread out from that. If you have a look at literature, the very, very first thing that our Tawth Imam Sharif, when he comes, will say, Alas, O people of the world, after saying his two and first two, three calls, in the third call, he says, "Inna jaddi al Hussein qataluhu atshana." That is to say, they killed my grandfather, thirsty. It is as if the people of the world they will know who Imam Hussein alayhi salam is. That whose job is that to tell the people and to let the people know who Imam Hussein alayhi salam is? Whose job is it? It's not only mine sitting on the member. 
It's also the normal peoples. Each and every one of us has to think about a way. Secondly, our prophets, والسلام, they were sent and they were ordered to speak to people according to the language that they speak. Now, this is not only related to the words and the language, and literally language. No, the way they understand, the way their mentality is. Today in the West, literature has a huge position in, the, in people's lives. Wherever you go, you'll see people reading, holding a novel, reading. There has one English book been written based on true events. The story and the narrative of Ashura. One single one. How many, how, many, how many decades and how many centuries has it been that we have Shias who speak English? Just one, just one. I guarantee that whoever were to write this, he would become a millionaire quickly. A multi-millionaire. Just think about it. We need to present that this needs awareness. The basic thought. We haven't even thought about that. One single film concerning, based on true events, especially right now in Hollywood, you find that there are many films. Right now, recently, there is a trend in the past few years of making films that are based on true events. Correct? The pirates in Somalia and other places, etc. Many, many different stories. Type Imam Hussain It's a story that, have, that has everything. All of the different plots that you may want. It has an, a protagonist, an antagonist, supporting characters. <laughs> and you can even make sequels from that. Just one. We have people who are talented. We have people who work and, and do other, th- other things as well. Related to this specialization of media. But we need tabliq to, done, to be done this way. One of the other things is that Alhamdulillah, we do, I do know that our youth, they have good paintbrushes, correct? The one day, one of these Muharram, either before or after the 10 special days, to have an exhibition or to have a, yani, a, a, a workshop or a day for children to paint and to take these paintings somewhere, to town hall, to city hall, whatever. Present them, tell them, this is what happened, one, two, three. Or a play, a drama play. This is how to present. That this is related to awareness. This is just one small issue. What about the rest? Is Shah Ramadan only for me and you to come to the mosque? The du'as that come after it and I'm following it. To listen to my lecture. Salat. Eat iftar. And that said, Shah Ramadan is ended. That this, is between, this is between us only as a community. As Muslims, as Shias. What about everybody else? When the Holy Prophet said, when he was speaking to people and he gave that khutbah of receiving the holy month of Ramadan, he didn't say, أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّهُ قَدْ أَقْبَلَ إِلَيْكُمْ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ That, O oh, believers, he didn't only say that, O oh, believers, O oh, Muslims, the month of mercy has come to you. No. أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O oh, people, everybody. Currently, we have the, people, the problem of home, homelessness. One part of our iftar, if we were to go to a homeless person, to show them this is the holy month of Ramadan, that we as Muslims, this is the message of Islam, not what you see on the media. This is tabliq. So this is related to awareness, mentality. The problem is mentality. We unfortunately, to a certain extent, we have a very traditional mentality. A very traditional mentality. We have to try and break out of it. The mentality of Aim alayhim salam was not like this. The mentality of the ulama is not like this. The mentality in the Hawza is not like this. How can we accept that our mentality has to become like this? Among the reasons for the ghayba is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the imam to have the norms of the holy Pro- of the prophets before him embodied in him and one of these norms just like the norm of nabi musa alayhi salam when nabi musa was born or when his mother was pregnant with him his birth or his her pregnancy did not show and the same sunnah it applied to the mother of our twelfth imam alayhi salam among the sunnah and among the other norms is the is the norm of ghayba occultation from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, it's narrated, our qa'im will have an occultation that will be lengthy. The narrator asks him, why Ibn Rasulillah? He answers, 
because Allah did not accept except for there to be in him the norms of the prophets in their occultations and also there he must finish the entire periods of their occultations collectively and then he recited the verse bismillahir rahmanir rahim that tarkabunna tabaqan an tabaq and you will fa- you will first stage from stage to stage the norms of those who lived before you the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi sometimes allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad Sometimes he would go to the cave of Hira for a few days, weeks, and he would remain over there. Nabi Musa alayhi salam, he had that 40 day ghaybat of his and the other prophets before them and after them. As a result, this has to apply with regards to our Imam alayhi salam as well. This is something that not many people know. For the trust, Allah, for the trust of Allah to come forth. Look at the narration. It is narrated from Al-Hasim Al-Mahmoub that Imam Al-Sadiq says what was Ali السلام, not a strong believer in the religion of Allah? The Imam Al-Sadiq says yes. Then that narrator asks, then why were the people able to overcome him? And why did he not prevent them from doing so? Imam Al-Sadiq السلام, said a verse from the Holy Book of Allah prevented him from doing so. In certain battles like in the battle of Safin, why were they able to overcome him? Or do not let him become victorious 100%. Correct? Imam Ali alayhi salam, if he wanted to take, you see, you, those of you who know the, bat, the story of the battle of Hunayn, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, he fought flanks and battalions of people. Correct? And he is the perfect soldier. He does not, he is not in need for there even to be an army with him. If he was solely to be put in the battle of Safin, he is able to have them all out. Type. Why was it that the tide would turn against his battle, his, his army, Sometimes because the battle of Safin took quite a few months. That person says, which verse? Allah, the Imam alayhi salam says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Law Tazayalu la Adabna Ladina Kafaru Minhum Adab al Alima. Had they been separate, we would surely have punished the faithless among them with a faithful with a painful punishment. Imam Ali did not use to kill the fathers until the wada'a, the sons, the trusts, the amanat of Allah, who are in the loins of those parents. They come forth and they are born. He, and when they came forth, he overcame those you overcame. Imam al hujj according to this narration, he will not reappear until all of the trust of Allah. Yani in, let's say, for example, a father who is not a believer. In the future, he will have one child, one descendant who is a believer. Until that believer is born, okay, the Imam salam will not appear so that in order to punish that child. No. He will be born waiting for all of the mu'mineen to be born. And after that, from his children, if anybody is going to be a, 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 a non-believer, no other believer again in his lineage, then he will come. And one of the stories is mentioned that during the battle of Safin, Salman al-Muhammad, he comes to the Holy to Imam Ali and he tells him, Oh, Imam Ali I killed 30 people. I was really happy man, happy and telling him with fakhr. How many did you kill, O oh, Imam? Told him, I killed a certain number. But before killing them, I used to look with Ilm al ghaib at his lineage and his descendants. How many mu'mineen, if he's going to even have mu'mineen in his, in his children among his descendants. So if he will have mu'mineen, I would only injure him. I wouldn't kill him so that if I were to kill him, that child would also be killed. Whereas you, Salman, you may have killed so many mu'mineen with this. So this is the wada'a Allah. Also for the failure of all other schools of thought to appear, to become apparent. Capitalism, communism, liberalism, etc., etc. All of these different schools of thought. Our Imam alayhi salam will come in the end, according to the narration of Imam al-Waqir alayhi salam. Our government will be the last of governments. Where nobody will remain except that they had a government before us. So that they cannot say that when an imam comes to rule that, oh, if we had a chance to rule, we would have ruled just as well as him. No, nobody will have an excuse anymore. And to that, the imam salam, says, refers the words, وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And the outcome, the final outcome, will be in favor of those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, so that he does not have to pay allegiance to anybody. In one of the letters, our Imam salam, is asked by one of the Ashab, and he is asked certain questions, and Imam salam, then tells him that, oh, you, that all of my fathers, they had to pay allegiance 
to the tyrant of their time. However, when I reappear, I will not have to pay allegiance to any tyrant that comes. Type, what is the role of Imam السلام, during Al Ghayb Al Kubra? Let us go through this quickly. First of all, to protect true Islam on the Madhab of Ahl al Bayt. Our Prophet says that every innovation, it will have a wali from the earth and from his family who will who will who will, uh, who will help those people, the mu'mineen, in that bid'ah that they are faced. For every innovation which the people of faith are faced with, there is a wali who will defend them, defend the mu'mineen from this bid'ah. Secondly, to guide the success and to, gu- to, to lead to the success. Success of ijtihad. In many occasions, our Imam alayhi salam has given or has shown the ulama fatawa. And he has guided them, sometimes the application. If I'm not mistaken that this happened with either Sheikh al-Mufid or Ibn, uh, Ibn Babawai, the father of Sheikh al-Saduq. One of the two, that a woman had died and she, she was pregnant. All of you may know this. And so... This marja of the time, he told them, okay, bury her. There is no necessary, it's not necessary to bring out the child. All of a sudden, as they were about to do so, a knock came on the door of this marja of the time. That the Imam alayhi salam tells you, order for the child to be removed from the mother. And the child became, uh, and the child was alive. After that, that marja felt, he felt so bad, he said that, no, I'm not going to have the... The, the courage to give any other fatwa, so he stopped. A while later, a knock comes again on the door. Again, this is one of the abdal, one of the special servants of the imam during the ghayba kubra. He tells him that your imam says that minkum al ifta wa minna tasheeh. That al ifta, that you have to continue to give fatwa, we will guide you and correct you where you mistake. Imam al-Sadiq says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not leave the earth except that he places a knowledgeable person, an alim. Yet is to say, a wali, a ma'asum, an imam in it. So if the believers increase something by mistake, he makes them return to the right limit. And if they decrease, he tells them, complete that limit. Thirdly, to guide the ulama in managing the affairs of the ummah. The umma. This is a huge role. And of course, this, is, this comes from that narration that I read out to you yesterday. Those if, concerning those events that happen, refer to those who narrate our narrations because they are my hujjah over you. With this regard, like I mentioned, our Imam alayhi salam, he guides our ulama considering what to do. We say that does our maraja, does our ghastani and others, were they, are they able to meet the imam? Our maraja in general, our Imam alayhi salam guides them. During the time of the Islamic Revolution, I especially I don't remember the name of the Alim, but when Imam Khomeini returned to Iran, during this time, the Shah had gone. He had left an army general in charge of affairs, and he had declared martial law. So there was a curfew. People were not allowed to go out at night. At that point, Imam Khomeini gave a fatwa. That it is haram for people to stay inside. They must go outside. Upon that, this alim, he calls Imam Khomeini that the, the people who are going to be killed, on whose neck is this blood going to be? Are you going to bear that? So the response from Imam Khomeini was that this order has come from a higher place. This order has come from a higher place. And he dropped the phone, that alim, that, that alim dropped the phone and he was one of the mujtahideen. And he went out as well. He as well was taken by this. He as well, he went out. And came to be known that had they stayed inside, the Islamic revolution would have been wiped out. It it would have been stopped. So it was necessary. It was really pivotal for them to leave, for the mu'minin to go out that night. In another occasion as well, of course, when Imam Khomeini again, when he came after the Islamic Revolution now was successful. In the beginning, he did not have a house. He did not stay in a house. So he stayed in a school. And there were mu'mini and they were guarding Imam Khomeini. Imam Khomeini had a room in which he had a habit of praying outside, uh, pray, praying inside, staying awake. So one of the days, one of the people, one of the guards, he hears that this room is supposed to be empty. It's just Imam Khomeini in it praying. But light and 
he went closer, he could hear two people talking. As he wanted to come to the window in order to see who that second person was, his body froze. He could not move again. He could not move. Whoever wants to, I need the reference of this of this particular tale, I can give it to him after the majlis. After that, that person froze. He could not move. So the door opened and Imam Khomeini came to him. And he was a little bit upset. He told him that even though you're guarding me, but you don't have the permission to come and to listen and to eavesdrop. And it came to be known that Imam Khomeini was with somebody else and he was with Sahib Zaman. Allahumma sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa There's also another story, inshallah, leave it for, for next time, for tomorrow, inshallah. Thirdly or fourthly, our Imam alayhi salam's guardianship of the Muslim Ummah. In the letter to Sheikh al Mufid, the Imam tells him, We know of your news and the humiliation that you're suffering. We are not neglectful of guarding you, nor have forgotten you. Otherwise, calamities would have befallen you and your enemies would approach you. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Imam alayhi salam, he also guides the Mu'mineen, he guides us in our affairs. Individually and collectively as well. You will feel it in your life. Sometimes when you say, Ya Sahib al Zaman, Adrikin. Trust me, whenever you say this, and this is tested by ulama, whenever you say this, you are facing a trouble. Ya Sahib al Zaman, Adrikin. Trust me, your matter will be solved, especially if it is an imminent danger that you are facing. We will end uh, today's. Uh, okay, let's let's have this final uh, question and, and we'll go to the video. We'll have time for the video. Okay. Where will the residents of Atul Imam Ali Salam be when he reappears? Masjid Sasa, Masjid Al Haram, Masjid Jam Quran, or Masjid Al Sahla? Sure. Masjid Al Haram. Goat, goat. Second question. No problem. Masjid Al Haram, Masjid Masjid Sasa, Masjid Al Haram, Masjid Jamkaran, or Masjid Sahala. Masjid Al Sahala. Anybody else? In the West Sasa. Huh? Masjid Masjid Al Sahla. Ahsantum. Salla ala Muhammad. I'll translate this video for you. It's in Arabic, but I translated it. One of the special features of the special Quran is that the Imam read the Quran seven times a day. Three separate times. After the Salah of the Salah of the Salah of the Salah of ولم يكن شيء يمنعه عن تنظيم وقته. كان الإمام يبكي، لكنه لم يكن ليفعل ذلك أمام الآخرين. كان بكاء الإمام بكاء أنصاف الليالي. كان الإمام يستيقظ قبل ساعتين من صلاة الفجر من كل ليلة لأداء صلاة الليلة التي بقي الإمام مقتدرا عليها منذ شبابه. كما يقول صاحبه منذ أن كان في السادسة عشرة من عمره. نعم كان الإمام يبكي كثيرا وفي صلاة الليل بالشكل الذي عندما يبكي في بعض الأحيان فإن المنشفة لا تعود كافية لتشفيف دموعه وذلك لشدة بكائه those who understand that there is another world, who understand that this dunya is just a bridge to that world, those people will not have any fear and they will have hope of reaching that other goal. Allah is the one who 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 is